Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It's nine o'clock, which means it's time for a talk magic. And I am here sitting down with somebody who has been requested to be interviewed on this channel by the subscribers more than anybody else recently. He is the creator of what I think is the best app for magicians at the moment, bar none, but he's also done so much more in his career. I'm a huge fan. I am, of course, talking about the one and only Jonathan Levitt. How are you doing, Jonathan? You okay? I'm great. Thank you for uh, thank you for having me here. It's really a pleasure to, to do this with you, man. I know how busy you are. I know you've got so much going on all the time so that you found time. And I know we've been back and forth with dates for a while now, trying to get your schedule and my schedule to match. I'm so, and it's really early over there with you, isn't it? It's like, it's like the evening here with me or early afternoon. You're, you're kind of like early in the morning. Well, here's the thing. It, it's 9.30 a.m. here. And, but I've been up for over three hours, you know? So I, this is, but I, I, I'm, I am exhausted because I'm not sleeping. I'm just, I just, I, you know, I can't, I can't do it. I'm up late. I actually, I'm up, actually often I'm up late talking to India and then I'm, and then uh, these days, and then I'm up early, but, but talk about busy. You, my friend are busy. I should turn the tables on this interview and talk about you. Cause if, <laughs> if this audience doesn't know about you, well, they know about you obviously, but do they know everything about you? You are a madman, a machine, a machine. I keep myself I busy, it. keep myself busy, keep myself busy. It. It's great. It's great. <laughs> I have to say, it. I really appreciate you because every time I've done another interview on Pacific Coast time, everybody wants to get interviewed in the afternoon. So I'm up at three o'clock in the morning interviewing people, blurry eyed. I much rather prefer this. This is so much easier way to do it. So I'm actually awake for this interview, which is good as well. So me so too. I've already had my cup of coffee. So, <laughs> so, buck, so buckle up. Here we go. This is going to be a long one. <laughs> So, I, I, you know what, I, I want to talk about so much and I referenced The Stranger in the introduction and um, yeah. we'll talk about that a little bit later on. I, I said to you off camera, I went up to your booth, um, Blackpool 2020, just before the entire world went a bit weird. And I, I got my Stranger badge, I was wearing it for the whole weekend and I, I just immediately fell in love with it. You, the presentation that you did on the booth and, and just everything, I was like, I need this in my life immediately. And I want to talk all about The Stranger because I've raved about it on this channel for ages. But before I do, I want to give people some context, just in case there's people watching this that don't know uh, you or don't know who you are. You, you, you know, obviously you're a magician, but you've done an awful lot more throughout your career. It's not just magic. You've been involved in lots of distant aspects of entertainment. So let's just talk about that for a little bit first, if that's okay. Yeah. Let's start off. When did you get involved in magic? Magic stroke entertainment. Was it something that you wanted to do from a very young age? What's your origin story? <laughs> uh, my dad was a magician. Okay. So yeah, and and when he but as a young man, and so he from the Bronx, and he would shop. He, he Tannins was his shop, and so but he but but uh, so when I was eight years old, I was digging through the base our basement in a in a, in a, in a dresser, the bottom drawer of a dresser. I'm, I'm short now. I was really short then. Uh, anyway, he opened up a dresser and inside were his magic props from when he was a kid. And that included spring flowers. It included uh, square circle, uh, tubes with dragons on them, you know. And and so that was it. So I found those. And so when I was eight, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. That's We moved back from the state. We were over in Iran for five years until 1979, moved back to the States, ended up in Missouri in St. Louis and uh, the middle of the country. And so that's where we were. So I found some of his, so thankfully he still had his magic stuff. Cause as I say to you now, cause I've, I've told people this many, many, many times uh, just in, you know, in conversation or in the show. And, and as I talk to you now, it occurs to me, wait a minute, we lost everything moving from Iran to the back to the States and we ended up in St. Louis, and yet I was still able to find his magic props. And I'm I'm having an epiphany as I speak to you in this very moment because I'm realizing they made it back with us because we had lost everything over in Iran. So uh, because we were forced out during the revolution. So it's interesting to me that he kept his props and how important that is uh, to the story because without that I wouldn't have been launched into this. So I was eight years old when that when that happened. Wow. 
And was yeah. your dad still into magic? With like, was he able to see you getting interested in it and take you under his wing, or was it kind of you finding your own way? Or how, well, look, how did that pan out? A little bit of both. I mean, he he had really been out of it, but because I found it, they they helped me. I was very fortunate to grow up in St. Louis, where I, International Brotherhood of Magicians (IBM) Ring One is. And uh, my contemporaries were Chris Korn, Chris Kenner, Andrew Goldenhirsch. You know, they were, and, and I was, my mentors were Harry Monty and, and et cetera, et cetera. So, so I'm very lucky to have grown up at that specific point in time in that place. And so I became, you know, I was in the magic club that helped me. I started taking classes, started street performing when I was 12 in St. Louis. So all of that sort of happened um because because of it all and because of where i was so i'm very fortunate and as a result then my father became more involved in the magic club himself not more involved he became involved in the magic club uh and so he sort of took another interest in magic now he's he's not so he has an interest in it he certainly is not a performer anymore um but over the years it was funny because it used to be uh that um that my my mom and dad were uh jonathan's parents and then I left town. They continued to do things with the club and help with the shows and do lighting and yada, yada, yada. And it eventually became, um, oh, oh, J I, Jonathan's your son. So it, it totally flipped and, you know, everybody basically forgot who I was. Uh, but yeah, so, so. <laughs> and here's a, here, uh, yeah, anyway, that, that's it. No, that's go, on, go, on, go, on, go on, go on, No, 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 I was, <laughs> let's keep moving. Well, okay. <laughs> so, so was there a period of time? You say you start doing street shows at the age of twelve, and you mm. you join magic clubs, and you got mentors. Uh, was there a period of time during this when you were a kid where you kind of maybe left magic and then came back into it? Because I've interviewed so many people, and they go, "Oh, at fifteen, I found girls, and I left, and I came back with a renewed interest." Or was it something that you always kind of wanted to do, and you were laser focused on doing? Yeah, well, when I was when I was nine, I found girls and then at 10, I came back into magic. Uh, no, so we we uh, I, you know what? The answer is yes, I, I, I sort of did, but not really. So I started when I was eight, started street performing when I was 12, did it all through high school. It was actually quite, you know, for a for a kid, pretty lucrative. <laughs> you know, doing that on the street in high school was fantastic. I was able to make my own money and it was great. Uh, and then then I went to college in New York and in college, I continued to do magic and started producing shows on campus, small shows to much larger shows, uh, much larger shows and bringing in variety acts and just producing and then hosting and emceeing and doing all that. So I did a lot of that in college, kind of forget, forgot that I had actual curriculum and academia, academia to, do, to do. But, uh, and then from there, I moved to Denver, Colorado to uh, work for a software company, a major software company. And during those four years in Colorado, I basically put magic on the back burner and I still did it. I dabbled in it. I did a, a busker fest out in Colorado. I uh, was in the, I had a spotlight in the newspaper. You know, I still did a little bit of that. I was sort of active in the magic club, but it really was not as aggressive as, as the rest of my life. And then after that, I moved to Los Angeles, quit my job, moved to Los Angeles to pursue uh, an acting career. And that's when magic came back into my life full, full force and, uh, and everything changed really. So, so yeah, so, so very little did it ever really, it never went away. It never went away, not really. Okay, okay. And I want to talk to you about moving to Los Angeles in a bit, but before I do, you mentioned earlier on when you were first getting into magic that you had a mentor and you were in magic clubs. There's a lot of people that watch this channel that are new into magic. Have you got any advice for how to, you know, people come into magic and they're super excited and they want to learn absolutely everything. And then they kind of, it's almost like a light bulb. They burn out very, very quickly. Is there any advice that you can give to newer people that want to get really good? Like, is it important to find a mentor? Is it important to join a magic club? Can you do everything online these days? Um, you know, oh. has YouTube kind of uh, replaced that human interaction? Or do you think that's still important if people want to, you know, get really good at, at, at being a magician? That's a big question. 
That's a big mm. question. And, you know, I, I'm going to answer the question, but I'm also going to tell you, I, I just interacted with a, um, uh, a young magician, 15 year old out of Pakistan uh, last week. And it's so interesting, really good guy. I'm going to say kid because he's 15, but he's a good guy. Uh, he's a guy. Uh, uh, he, he said to me, what can I do to become more well known? He was, you know, he was, he wants to be in Pakistan, wants to bring his style of magic or, you know, more of a, uh, an advanced level of magic to Pakistan because the, the other magicians in Pakistan, it, he feels like it's very, um, it's not as sophisticated as other parts of the world when it comes to magic. So he said, what can I do to become, you know, more popular, more well known? And I said, well, first, slow down. <laughs> You're 15. <laughs> right. And just learn whatever you can. Right. Just learn whatever you can read books, just keep learning. And and I'm going to circle back to your question and more fully. But but he said, well, that's cool. What would you learn? And I looked at my shelf and I said, well, I would get uh, I would get the secrets of Brother Hammond, Brother John Hammond from from Kaufman. Uh, it's one of my Bibles as a kid. You know, this book is tremendous, right? This book is amazing, right? This book has so much in it, so good. Read this book. And he was like, oh, okay, that sounds good. I said, Royal Road to Card Magic. Have you ever gone through that? And he goes, oh, no. I said, well, you should do that, right? So, okay, this is good advice. I still stand by this advice. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, Quality Magic from David Regal, his first book was my, I mean, that I poured through that, you know? So that, I mean, like, these are good, this is good advice. Well, he says to me, okay, I mean, that's great. I mean, I've been, you know, I've been doing a lot of Danny Dorothy stuff and this and that. And he started showing me some, some magic and talking to me about what he likes to do. And I'm thinking, that's amazing, right? That's amazing. So I still think what I've said is good advice and you should still do it and follow it, but you are clearly doing more than I did at that age, you know, than many of us would have done at that age. And, and I think the reason for that is the accessibility of this content, right, of this yeah. teaching. So like you're asking, you know, where, where does this come from? You know, we didn't have YouTube at the time. Uh, we, we, we didn't have that access. We didn't have Vanishing Inc. putting their conference online for free. We didn't have Tannins putting because of the pandemic doing their camp for free online we didn't have that stuff right yeah. so the accessibility is is there uh, so i think the answer to the question is never stop learning keep learning in any way you can right read these books because because the simple tricks are not simple and they are there there's a reason why they they are classics. So read the books, uh, look online. There's so much content, you know, with the online lecturing now and, and what have you. There's so much, but soak it all up. So I I mean, I, I don't really have another answer for you. As far as mentors are concerned, this is a concern to me uh, because I think that when we were younger, uh, I'm putting you and me in the nearly the same age. Well, we're range. pretty much, yeah. I think we're pretty much there, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So you, when we were younger, we we had mentors, or we hopefully had mentors. You know, people that we um, that we learned from, and that's so important, so important. I do a lot of magic coaching now, on, and I mostly on virtually, and uh, and that's been that's been really great for me, but also really um, positive for me. Uh, just from my my feeding my soul because I've really enjoyed teaching and working with people, uh, and I love doing that. And it and it's it's been great to see the evolution uh, with so many folks. And so, uh, being a mentor in that way for me to other people has been really um, satisfying. And I think it's it's so important. And I think today, with the access that we have, some of that mentoring is going away. It hasn't really been there in the same way. I think uh and that is a concern to me quite frankly but yeah but yeah
No, uh, I completely, the question. I've rambled no, on. And I completely agree with you 100%. It's a great answer to the question. I think that a lot of people do run before they can walk. And uh, you know, I think going back to basics is important. So really great advice. Yeah. I want to ask you one other question before we move on to where we were, which was you moving to Los Angeles. Um, the, ask, the other question I want to ask you, again, this is asked an awful lot on this channel, so I'd like to throw it out to you. Any advice on actually going out and performing on stage in front of crowds? Because a lot of people, when they get into magic, they, they learn close up and they perform it to their friends and two or three people down the pub or, or, or at school or wherever it may be. Um, but the ultimate goal for a lot of performers is to get on stage. Now, you were doing street shows at the age of 12. You talked about all the way through college doing big shows and emceeing. You're putting yourself in a lot of stressful situations on stage. And a lot of close-up magicians and a lot of people that are used to just doing close-up, the thought of going on stage scares them to death, shaking hands, sweating. What am I going to do? Oh, my gosh. Any advice on, on, on going out and performing on stage and not being a bag of nerves? Yeah, I mean, look, the reality is if you go on stage, whatever that stage is, whether it's a large stage or whether it's uh, 20 people in a, in a room, right? You're still having to go in front of those people. 20 people in a room, in my mind, can be much more terrifying. You are mm. right there. People are watching you closely. You talk about shaking hands, right? You, I mean, being on stage, just the vastness of the stage can be overwhelming or intimidating. But the truth is that there's no real difference there. The only, for me, the, the time, the only time that I really sweat, whether it's close up, whether it's stage, wherever it is, is when I'm not prepared. Right. Mm -hmm. That's when we sweat, when we're not prepared. Right. So if you're going on stage with a stage act or an act that will work on a stage or for a larger audience. If you're well, I'm going to circle back to something I said and, and give a little great caveat to that, but the you're nervous when you're freaked out, when you're you don't have your stuff down, when you don't know if it's going to totally work right? That's when you're nervous. Now, with that said, it doesn't mean that you should go on stage fully prepared and not be nervous. Mm. Being nervous is a good thing, not a bad thing, right? Mm. So, and when you, I remember actually vividly in St. Louis before walking on stage, I remember the moment, I remember where the, the stage, I remember backstage, I remember who I was talking to, another one of my mentors. I remember everything about this moment when I said, oh my gosh, I'm nervous. I was 12 years old. I said, I am nervous. What just happened? And the response was, well, that's a good thing. That means you're going to want to do better, right? You're going to want to push through and do better. But, but, the, but the moment that you lose those nerves to an extent, then that's when you need to be concerned. Now, it doesn't mean that I or you or any of us don't, we, we, there doesn't mean we'll go, we, that we don't have moments of going on stage fully like let's do you know no problem of course but but always there's a tinge right there's a mm -hmm. little thing that goes on like Oof, we're gonna do this right and and that's okay but if you're full sweat sweating that comes down to not being prepared mm -hmm. and if you're prepared if you've got the flight time if you've gone through the, the bits, you know, now this also doesn't mean that the first time you walk out on stage, you're not going to be sweating bullets. I get that, you know, but, but ultimately it comes down to be prepared. I mean, if you're, you know, I get, I'll do a close up show for 10 people. And if I'm trying something new that I haven't fully worked out, I'm pretty nervous. Yeah. I'm pretty nervous about it. I'm not sweating anymore, but you know, I feel it. I go, okay. Cause, cause you're about to jump off a, you know, jump off a cliff and you're not sure where you're, how you're going to land or what's below you. But, but I think that's the answer. I, I don't think that there's any secret thing to going on stage for a thousand people versus 15 people, you know? And uh, what I would say is this though, when you do go on stage, whether it's for a thousand or 15, but uh, look up, look up and remember that you have a whole audience there, you know, and, and look, you know, actually, uh, when I was, I, I remember doing the close-up room at the Magic Castle years ago, and a friend of mine, Len Reed, said to me, 
you you're not looking up and this isn't a close-up room right this is only like you know yeah. this big right so and he said you're not looking up and ever since that moment i, I remember that you're you're totally right i was looking i'm always looking at the front row or the table and that's you know so look up and then in in the theater in the theater look up and in fact i remember the advice uh jim simon gave me the advice we were doing a uh, recreation of thurston uh, howard thurston's stage act and i was playing thurston and he was relaying that you would look up in the balconies you know even if nobody was in the balcony you would look to the balcony right and you're so look up look out at the farthest point uh bring those people into the show and anyway a little bit of advice whenever you're on stage remember to look up and take everybody in and Another piece of advice. I don't know. I'm giving. You're, you didn't ask me for advice, but but when you walk this. out, I love it. Go in. When you walk out on stage, uh, this will help anybody walking out on stage for uh, for a large audience. When you walk out on stage, and if you're nervous, and if you're not nervous, but if you're nervous, walk to the center of the stage, plant your feet, and actually, this comes from Tony Clark too. Plant your feet look up at the audience, look up at the audience and just breathe for a moment. Just take it in and don't feel compelled to rush into anything. Let that moment just sit with you. And that's okay. That's okay. You know, we, when we're nervous, we feel like we can just, we have to just kind of get going, going, going. Just take a moment, take a deep breath, you know, plant your feet. Don't sway. Don't rock. Look up at the audience and just take a breath in. And what a huge help that will be to launch you into the show. And that is totally okay. It's great. 100%. Totally agree with you. Absolutely, completely agree with you. I hope people are listening to this because you're giving a master class of advice. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Yeah. Um, right. So we've got to the point where um, you're, you've spent four years in Colorado working in a software company. And then you decide to move across the other side of the country and become an actor was that a, what what made you decide to do that what made you decide because that's kind of a risk right you've got a as my mom and dad would used to say to me you've got a proper job you don't want to screw that up you've got a you've got a proper job right why would you want to go and get yourself a why would you want to do that get yourself keep your proper job like was that something that you always had a desire to do as a kid go and do acting or, or was it uh, was it something that happened while you're in Colorado? And what made you decide to actually go and take that plunge and go and go and uproot your life and follow your dreams? I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Talk about jumping off a cliff. Uh, yeah. I remember I was in Colorado, and people would ask me, "What are you going to do with your life?" And I would say, "Well, I'm going to be on a sitcom." That was my standard answer. I'm going to be on a sitcom. I was very funny. Uh, not as funny as I thought I was, but I but I thought, well, I should be on a sitcom, mm -hmm. uh, which is a ridiculous thing to, for people to say. But, but I, I, that's what I, my common, my standard answer was. Well, there, it, there came a point when I realized, you know what, they don't make sitcoms in Colorado. Mm. So I just, had a moment. I was uh, I was in New York City, fifty uh, fifth and seventh Burlington Hotel, sitting there in my hotel room on business, and I just had this moment when I said, "What am I doing?" And I called my buddy Steve Aaronholtz, and I, who was a friend from college, comedian and writer, and living out here in Los Angeles, and I and I called him up and I said, "I think I'm I'm going to move to L.A." And he goes, "Great, I'll help you." I was like, "Okay, all right." So then I got back to Denver after my business trip and I called my mom and I said, mom, I think I'm going to move to LA. And without missing a beat, she said, great, honey, that's fantastic. And I said, okay, I guess I'm moving to LA. So next day I went into work, quit my job. And two weeks later I was leaving Denver and, uh, and that was it. So yeah, I, I just, it just had this, just this wake up. You know, and I said, well, what am I doing? You know, I'm saying I'm doing this thing, but I'm not doing it here. You know, so I, you know, I, I mean, my story probably isn't very much, very different than most 
stories, I suppose, you know, uh, but we, everybody's a little different out here in LA, how they get here, but you just got to kind of pick up and move. And it was so liberating to do that. Uh, so invigorating to do that. And I think uh, most, I think a lot of people would love to do something like that, but it's very hard to jump off that cliff. Very I hard. think that that's, that's, that's a huge piece of advice there. If there's something that you want to do and you have a burning desire to do it and you think you can be good at it, well, then the only way to actually make that happen is to actually take that leap and go and do it. Just do it. I mean, I didn't know anything. I had one friend who said, I'll help you. I had one, I mean, I didn't know, I mean, certainly didn't know anything. I mean, I'd been to LA on business, but I didn't know anything about LA. I didn't know anything about LA uh, or the industry, you know, the entertainment industry out here, you know, and nothing. So I had to dive in and just uh, learn as much as I could right away as in whatever, I mean, I, you know, and I got lucky. I mean, I, in the, in the things that, you know, I, I mean, luck comes from because you're prepared for it and because you're, you know, you're accepting of it and you're set yourself up for luck. Um, you know what? King and Knight just told me last night at dinner, we were having dinner at Nick and King's house. And she, they said, there's an old saying, uh, luck is for the brave. Luck is for the brave. I think that's it. Right, which is a, is a great is a great saying, uh, you know. So if you're if you're brave, luck will will come to you. But but so anyway, uh, I think that's right. And so I I just took a chance, yeah. And and you know, here's the other thing. This is not for every. This is not true for everybody. Okay, but in most cases, in today's world, people that want to will land on their feet in one way or another, right? In one way or another, we will land on our feet and, and we will do what we need to do to survive. And not for everybody, but many people have friends and family around them that are going to help them get there, help support them in some, in some you know, emotionally or what have you. And so I think it's, don't, you know, don't be afraid. People want you to succeed uh, and then do whatever, you need to do. When I first got out here, I started a, in a, an acting class and I remember I needed a job. So I, I got a job. Uh, I was working at the pottery barn, which I, boy, I, I don't usually tell people this. I can't believe I'm telling you this. Uh, but I was working in retail at a retail shop. Right. And I had just come from work, from traveling the world working for a software company, and now I'm working in retail. And uh, an acting teacher of mine had said, do whatever you need to do to support your habit. And in that case, the habit was acting. So for me, I had moved to Los Angeles as an actor. So I was going to do whatever I had to do just to survive. And that was okay. You know, that was okay. And so I took that job and I was making some money and, you know, just whatever I had to do to, to just focus on the thing that I came out here for. And that was okay. And so do whatever you have to do to survive and do the thing that you too have a passion for. And you'll be okay. Let's be honest. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. You know, if it was easy. Everybody would be doing it. That's right. You can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. You know, it's, 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 you know that's true that's right that's right it's not it's not necessarily easy uh it, well, it's not easy uh but if you love it you know i mean and, and none of it should be work either it's like it should be play you should be yeah. doing things that are play for you right that you that you uh you have love love doing and passion doing and enjoy doing well the thing is we know now looking back on your career you've had a very successful career as an aside from everything that you do with magic you've had a very successful career as an actor oh you made it work for you 100 percent um and also you said that being over in los uh, los angeles kick-started your love of magic again which kind of got pushed to the sidelines in colorado was that because you thought this is a way to get into sort of acting jobs were using magic as kind of a vehicle to progress your acting career or was it that you had a desire whilst being over there to to have a career as a magician and also a career as an actor like how did that come about that's a very good question uh it's a great question because in one way i wanted the mat the magic was a way to help the other career 
and and in fact it did mm. right it it did in fact it's it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a vital piece of the puzzle that kicked off that career um and also magic will kill that career if not managed properly so that's a problem uh and also i had a i still had a love for magic i mean so i i went to the magic castle on i, I moved to la on wednesday july 4th 1997 on Thursday, Andrew Goldenhurst brought me to the castle for the first time. And on Monday, I auditioned and became a member of the Magic Castle. So I still had a love for magic, you know. I I um I didn't realize how little I knew until I got back out here, you know. You come out, you go, I know what I'm doing. I had no idea what I was doing. Right. When you, when you, now I'm, now I'm in LA really surrounded by great magicians and uh, new mentors. And you kind of go, wow, I have a lot to learn, you know? So, which was amazing. And so I, I was ap absolutely deeply involved in, in magic and the love for magic. So no, I, that never, that never went away. Um, and also the magic, as it turned out, was very helpful in my career, my other career. Mm -hmm. And 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 that and that wasn't really calculated. Uh, honestly, very little in my life and, and, and career has been calculated. It's been very. It just kind of goes in the way it goes, and you know I'm putting pieces and puzzle pieces together for sure. But I'm not calculating that much. You know, I'm just letting life kind of come to me as it as it comes, and I help direct it and push it in different directions. You know, and, and guide it a little bit, but. Uh, but I certainly haven't sat down with this long-term plan and said, okay, now I need to be doing this and this and this and this, and this is gonna help this. And, you know, it's just sort of all kind of come together as it comes together, but which I'm fine with and I've loved it. So, uh, yeah, yeah. That's amazing, that's amazing. And and where, when did you start creating magic? Because obviously we know you as a creator as well. Right, uh, I started creating magic uh i have written some notes you know and 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 what have you uh, somewhat early on while being out here in los angeles um actually you know what here's the truth i here's something i did i worked on a magic shop i've worked on several magic shops when i was a kid in st louis missouri and i you know what i did i made uh and i have the drawings to prove it i i made marked cards that you know that the current the, the current uh was ted leslie the the uh rub off letters you know what i'm talking about yeah. yeah i was doing that when i was a kid right i found these letter set letters and i had made these cards up and i started selling them in the local magic shop <laughs> and it wasn't until years later that i saw that these other that the you know they were being sold as a as a as a real thing so uh, i was doing that when i was a kid that was my first time marketing anyway but but since then uh the real stuff uh i did you know when i moved out to la i had done some notes some lecture notes um and put out my first major trick which which was uh, the unmatrix which is a, a signature piece of mine uh a, a matrix routine which which i was closing my show with for a long time still do sometimes uh and it's you know it's a really fun complex routine but that uh that came out probably around the year 2000 2001 maybe so that was really the time i was starting to i said okay i'm, I'm putting stuff out you know and i had some lecture notes and i had that and then i i put out a product called c4 which the color changing card yeah. case yeah that's i love great. that i love that routine that's amazing i've done thank that you. many years that's great oh my gosh thank you so much uh i I love it. it. And it took me, you know, a couple of years to bring to market. And it was a manufactured piece and, you know, I still have a few if anybody's interested, but because uh, I, I ordered, I, you know, I had many too many, many made uh, anyway, but, but it's a great, it's a really visual piece, but I'm really proud of it. And I was using a prototype for a long time and then eventually put it out. And that was, that was my first foyer into, I'm going to make and manufacture something. No, it's not. Oh my gosh. I put out a trick before that, wow, called Sanitized for Your Deception. 
The short Ooh. answer to your question, I'll tell you about that. But the short answer to your no, question it's fascinating. is fascinating. I don't want to yeah. <laughs> Keep no, no, going. But the, short, the short answer is it happened around the time of my X Files appearance and just shortly thereafter, which is around 2000, is when I started to put stuff out. Uh, because people started taking notice at that point because of uh, my X Files appearance and cover of Magic Magazine. And so, so that's when I started to generate some of this. But I put out a product called Sanitize for Your Deception. And this, I love this piece. Unfortunately, uh, COVID is, has kind of killed the piece. In a way, you can use it because, I don't know, but, but it's a fun uh, card to impossible location routine. I love it, did in my act for a long time. And it was very, I, it's really fun. And I actually did it on Master of, Masters of Illusion on TV, and it's it's a it's a good piece. Anyway, I manu I then decided to market that piece, and I will fully admit that my attempt at packaging and uh, putting that product together, I will fully say was subpar. Uh, I'm not proud of it. I mean, it's it's still a great routine. The routine's great, but what I offered in the package upon reflection could have been better and uh and i had to learn from that and so i put out this product c4 the packaging for that was amazing i remember the big box and it was just it was great really, thank you really well it made like were, it felt like you were getting something special thank you for saying that because i said to myself okay i did not i'm not proud of sanitizing the way that i would like to be proud of it c4 is going to be completely the opposite. And I said, okay, I'm going to do this full on. I'm going to have it manufactured, high quality, tolerance, nice packaging, graphics. I'm going to do this. And uh, and and so I'm very proud of, of that. And that, for me, I felt like, okay, I did it. That's great. And now everything that I'm ever going to put out from that point forward is going to have that level of quality. So I feel like I had to go through that that um, that moment of not really happy with something to understand how and why to make it better. And so you know that's what we do. So so I'm proud of that. And and it's a really great fun little piece. And it's been in my act for years. You know, and it's a really People strong piece. Watching this can still get this off you because I've talked about this. In fact, I've performed it on the channel. Uh, oh, and I've, okay. I've I've raved about it, so people can still get. It's a great opener for a card set. It's such a good opener for a card set. Really visual, really visual. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Yeah, I still have some. I still have some. It's uh, uh, Someplace I still have some. Yes, but so. oh, people, can they get to you via your website? I'll just ask that now, and I'll put this in. Yeah, there. you know what? My website is jonathanlevitt.com, but but uh, my store site is twistingtheaces.com. Okay, that's a good name. That's cool. I that's like right. that name. That's, that's a right. really good name. That's a really good Twi name. Twistingtheaces.com is is my is my store page. So uh, okay. yeah, you can find stuff on there. But, and you can reach out to me and it, and I'm very responsive. If you find me on Facebook or, you know, you can always re email, re reach out to me. I'm always pretty responsive. So. And how many more products did you put out after C4? Did you? Uh, did you I put out another set of lecture notes. I put out, um, I put out uh, a couple of manuscripts and, and then uh, not much. I don't have a lot, you know, what I have, I think that, Everything I put out is from my act. Yeah. Everything I put out is my own stuff that's been tested and and done and performed. I, I've never put out anything that it's like, oh, this is a fun little thing. I say that at my lectures too. I'm going to Chicago in a couple of days to lecture, and and I'll say the same thing there. You know, is you know, every I, I'm I've never put anything out that is like, oh, that'll be good for a lecture. You know, I'll package that for a lecture. So everything that I've ever put out is my stuff you know is is the stuff that i i do and and that's the way it comes up i'm i'm doing it for years and then i go you know what i should offer this to people because it's good so that's that's what i do so i never go into a lecture having a ton to sell i'm not that guy uh but what i sell is all tested and works and you know i'm really happy with 
Um, I have a product that I'm working towards putting out soon, another product that's been a staple in my act for uh, a long time. Uh, and I'm really proud to put this out. And it's something I've wanted to put out for for quite some time. And, and uh, it's a it's a card case gimmick, but it's it's really good. And in fact, I've been doing it uh, in every virtual show. Uh, I mean, I was doing it before virtuals, but now in virtuals, it's become a really important part of, of the opening of my act because it's so uh, visual and it works for this. And so it's, it's really been a good piece. So I'm really happy with this, uh, this, uh, this gimmick and, and that's gonna be fun. It's called just in can case. People, I'll just say that. Jump on a, can people jump on the mailing list so they know when this stuff's coming out? Um, you know what? Um, I believe you can contact me on that twisting the aces site and I don't have a mailing list sign up yet for just in case, but if you, uh, if you contact me through the site and say, I'm interested in that, I'll, I'll put you on a mailing list. And maybe before this goes up, I'll put up a, uh, a mailing list on that site. Hey, email me if you're interested in this. I'm, I think I will try to do that. So anyway, that's good. Uh, and then, and then the other stuff being put out right now, uh, are apps. So I'm, I'm working on, on that stuff. Yeah. And I want to talk to you about that, but I have two questions before we start yeah. talking about apps and the stranger. The first question is, I always ask creators this because you brought out some amazing material and, and you've said it was part of your act. The Matrix routine was part of your act, Z4, part of your act. Why did you decide to actually market this? You know, you're, you're an actor, you've had some great roles, you're very high profile, you've, you've, you've had a great job, a great career as, a, as an actor. Um, I'm, I'm sure that you were never worried about getting acting gigs or, or magic gigs. Is there a reason you actually go when, you know, I'm going to take this key integral part of my act and let people buy it rather than keep it for yourself, for your own audiences? Was there, was there a reason that you actually- You know, we put out a that? DVD, when I say we, Anthony Asimov uh, put out a DVD called Ahead of the Game, which is, um, which was a deconstruction of my close up act at the castle. And it was like over five hours of instruction. It's uh, it's the performance, it's commentary over the performance. If you turn that on, it's interviews, it's deconstruction of the psychology and the thinking behind the act, everything. And um, people asked me, well, why would you do that? And I said, why wouldn't I do that? I, I don't understand. You know, I, if, I, if I wasn't here tomorrow, then what good is it holding on to that? You know, mm -hmm. for, for me, when it comes to, teaching any of that one i hope you do it i hope you do it exactly like i do it and i know you will never will do it exactly like i do it right so if i can teach you something that that if i if you can take any of this teaching and use it use the app the uh the concepts and the theory and apply that to something you're doing amazing if you want to do exactly what i'm doing you're never going to do it exactly the way i do it anyway go do it you know, this, this, this world is too big for us to hold so much of this dear. And our world of magic is built on the idea of not telling anybody anything except the people that can continue to do it, right? Except the, 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 the students, the apprentices, the, the colleagues that can continue to do it. Otherwise, it dies. So I don't understand this idea of holding everything so sacred. Now, that, does that mean that I don't have some secrets that I want to hold on to for a little while? Sure, sure it does. Uh, that I, you know, and but I, I it, but do it, please do it. You know, I want people to do it. You know, I, I, I don't want people to steal it, but I want people to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm. I'm really of the mindset if if we go away tomorrow and I have something to teach or to, to offer, then you should then I should do that. I should make that available. Absolutely for sure. Yeah, fantastic. Totally, totally completely agree with you. Awesome stuff. And I Thanks. think one of the question before we start talking about the about the stranger and the other app is I suppose the other question that comes off on this channel an awful lot is time management. How do you find time for everything? I mean, you're there as an actor, having a career as an actor, career as a magician, you lecture, you're producing products, you're really heavily involved with the stuff that you're doing with apps right now. 
Um, you know, you, you, you appeared many times at the Magic Castle. You're doing virtual shows through lockdown. I mean, you're a busy guy. I mean, how do you decompartmentalize all of this stuff that you're going on in your life? And is the one thing that's a priority over the other. So, for example, if a Magic gig came up at the uh, or a Magic hosting gig or something at the same time that a big acting gig came up and they paid the same and, you know, is the one that you take over the other? Like, how do you deal with that? Because you've got a very successful career in more than one aspect of wow. Well, you know, here's the thing. I will say this. Okay, I, I mean, if we're if we're if we're having this 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 therapy session uh, here, I will say to you that I have been very fortunate to have work in many different areas of entertainment, and and in many different areas in life. I mean, I also do graphic design and publishing and design books and and do a lot of that and 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 some of that and a good a lot of that actually f uh, carries over into magic too which i'm very proud of and happy to do i just you know laid out uh, david's last two books david regal's last two books and you know and i'm working on another book for another well-known magician now and you know for me it's it's uh that's really special to do that so so it's sort of all over the place but i will say this uh i have had a career as an actor I have had a career as a television host, but that ebbs and flows. I've had a career as a magic consultant on major films and some TV shows, and but that ebbs and flows, and it's not consistent, you know. And and I can't just say, you know what, I want to be on that show and be on that show. So the reality is that for me, you know, on my business card, it says never stop creating, and that's the motto never stop creating, right? And so you just keep creating content, pushing it forward. It doesn't mean we all don't have moments where we just go, what are we doing? You know, but as much as you can, keep going forward, keep creating content, keep doing, and then allow these different worlds to intersect at some point. Uh, give them the opportunity to intersect at some point. And that's, that's the goal, right? I never know on a daily basis what I'm gonna be doing. I mean, I've got things on my plate, as you say, I'm always juggling things. Uh, but I, I'm constantly going from place to place or thing to thing or hat to hat. And during the day, I'm constantly doing that. And, uh, and so I, as far as how to handle it or how to manage it, sometimes I'm better at it than others. Uh, I work better under stress and pressure, which I wish I didn't. Uh, I wish I didn't put that stress or pressure on myself. I, was, I wish I was able to time manage maybe a little bit better than that. Uh, but so I don't really have an answer for it, except I wake up and I go, what is the thing I need to do right now? And I'm writing, you know, constantly, I've got note cards. Look at this one. This one says prop dog, uh, constantly writing things that I need to be doing, you know, and that was because, well, I need to reach out to Alex and talk to him, you know? So, so, I mean, I'm constantly writing, uh, every day. Oh, I talked to Badasha. This one says, uh, Josh, uh, Jay, Verizon bill. Uh, uh, Joe, you know, it's, I'm constantly writing these things down when I'm making lists all the time and trying to manage that. But, you know, it's hard. I mean, it, it, it is hard. But also, the alternative is I wake up and I go to a job. And at five o'clock, I come home, hopefully at five. And then I work on a hobby, and which is fine. All this is fine. In fact, uh, uh, it's quite enticing. Uh, and there are moments in my day I go, you know, maybe I should just put it all aside, get a nine to five job, come home, work on a hobby, have dinner, watch a little TV, go to bed and do it all and rinse and repeat. And there's something really enticing about that. There are times. Mm -hmm. And, but it doesn't take long before I get off that train and go, you know what, I, I love the fact that I juggle many, many different things. And on a daily basis, I don't know necessarily what I'm doing. You know, I, and I might wake up and work on a design of a book. And then I go, oh, I've got to get on a, I've got to get on a podcast with Craig Petty. And then I got to get off of this and get on a tech call for a show I'm doing tomorrow. And then I'm doing a, an interview or not an interview, but I have a uh, a, a business discussion with a comp with a with a job that might happen in Miami in November, and then I got to get on another tech call, and then I'm going to the Magic Castle the night to see some shows. That's today, right? And in the middle of that, 
I got to make sure my, I'm, I'm working on some tech stuff for a mobile setup for virtual. So I'm, I'm working on this stuff and I, I love that. I love that, you know, and that, I and I, so. you know, and I, just like you, you're doing the same kind of thing. You're all over the place. You're, you're, you're performing and you're interviewing and you're doing podcasts and you're, you're, a, you're amazing. Uh, and so I think we're probably of like mind in that regard. So it doesn't take me long to get off the train of, I think I'd like to have that stability. It's just, I'm, my makeup says do this other stuff. And I, and I love it. I love it. I love it. I can tell. I can absolutely yeah. tell. It's, it's awesome. It's really awesome to see. Which brings us to The Stranger, which oh. is, it set the world on fire. Like, everyone talks about The Stranger. So many people do it. Um, it's, I, like I say, I first saw it at Blackpool. You had a booth at Blackpool 2020. Um, everybody was saying to me, they were walking around with these badges, you know, and I was like, what's that all about? And everyone was like, you have to go and check out this stand. You have to go and check out this trick. This is the best trick ever. I'm like, okay, okay, I'll check it out. And I went over and you performed it on me. I was just blown away. I was trying to figure out if it was like some sort of app or not, because there was a guy and you were speaking to him. And I was like, well, maybe it's pre-recorded. But then you went on FaceTime and he was looking around at everybody. I'm like, this is just ridiculous. This is, this is the strongest thing ever. I was thinking this would be great impromptu. This would be great on close up. This would be great on stage. You could do this in so many different places. And then I bought it and I never do this. But at Blackpool, I went back to my hotel room and I, I had a pile of crap. None of it got opened. Half of it still isn't. But I had to go back to my hotel room just to open the stranger and just figure out what was going on because it blew me away so much. It is incredible. Like, Thank you. I suppose, where did you get the idea? How did we all of a sudden go from releasing lecture notes to doing an app? Like, obviously, you spoke about being in a software company, so I'm guessing that background has helped. And what made you kind of realize there was a gap in the market for an app like this? Because this is just one other thing before you answer that question. I was speaking to Mark Kirstein, and I actually spoke to him about the app market, because nobody knows as much as Mark. And I said to him, most of the apps that come out these days are a variation of Wikitest. You know, he came up with Wikitest, and a lot of them are like a variation of that. And, and, and the input method is the same as Angelo Carbone's thing from years ago. And there's not that much variation. But with The Stranger, completely different, completely different to anything else out there. It's just well, so good. Let me, let me say this, and I'll give a, a couple of nods to Mark, uh, because he deserves them, and he should have them. And I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that. Um, and Mark's been really great, and I, and I want to talk about that too. So, um, here's what happened. And for anybody that doesn't know, the conceit of this is uh, that you—it's based on the old wizard effect, right? That you are, that you are, um, uh, you have, let's say, a playing card selected. You call someone. Now, with the wizard, you call someone you know. There's a verbal code, and then they, that person is talking to the spectator and tells them the card, right? Yeah. The old wizard effect. We've all done it since we were kids. Well, the stranger, you pick a playing card and you call someone you don't know, and they have a conversation with you, whether it's audio or video, and, uh, and they reveal the card. So that's the basic conceit of it. But it goes much, 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 much deeper than that. Uh, you can do this with a with a live call. You can do it with no Confederate. You can do it in the middle of an ocean. Uh, you you know you can you you can have that reveal happen in in many different ways. You can have multiple reveals happen. You can have a book test word. You can have uh, a number. You can have uh, the number the objects that are in somebody's purse revealed uh you can you know with some of the integrations you can have a, a rubik's cube that's completely mixed fairly fairly mixed by an audience never touched you call a stranger put them on video they go searching through their closet for a, a rubik's cube they take it out and the cubes match 100 i mean it goes deeper and deeper and deeper <laughs> so so uh but the basic conceit is the same but it's just what can be revealed in the way it's done and then the and, and then the app is built in a way, as you know, 
to give convincers, to really throw people off the scent, to uh, make it streamlined and easy and really feel real and organic. I mean, there's so much work that's gone into it. It's all there. But how did it start? What's the genesis of it? We were doing, um, there's a, I'm, it's terrible because I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but but there's a way to, uh, somebody had re released this. There's a way on, a, on an iPhone to, uh, and this, and the strangers for iPhone and Android, but there's a way on an iPhone to, um, to on the fly, make it feel like you're calling a, a stranger number. And that would be somebody you know, and then they could, and then you could code them the, a card, let's say, and through that code, and then they would reveal the card. So it's fine, um, but it's really not smooth. It's got, it's complicated. It's not clean, you know, none of that. But we were doing it. There's a small group of us that were doing that. Uh, Robert Ramirez, Alex Ramon, myself, few of us were, were doing this. And, uh, and it was fun. We had a little circle of people and we were doing it. Well, my background in software, I'm a very techie guy. I said, there's gotta be a better way to do this. There has to be. And so I, I said, well, why don't I make an app that does that? Right? So I said to my girlfriend, Casey, uh, on, we were on a cruise ship. I said, I'm going to have an app made. I'm going to make an app that does that. And uh, we'll be done by the end of the cruise ship. Well, now, how many years later, and there has not been one day that has not gone by that we are not in active development on the stranger and constantly putting out updates and features and literally not one day uh, in, in all those years. And, and, and now I have an app company and we're doing other apps and I mean, it's been insane, but, but, uh, but that's how it started. Now I'm going to come back to Mark because I think it's a very important point. That's how it started. So then I'm making this app, which took a year and a half to put version 1.0 out. And just when I'm ready to put it out, I get a phone call or a message from Mark. Hey, I think you are doing something that's similar to my app diverter. And I said, oh, I, I and at that time I had never heard of diverter, right? I didn't know anything about it. Uh, let me, let me come back. Uh, Cause I, there's another nod I want to give to Mark. The reason, that the stranger exists, I will say this, is because Wikitest was so good, right? Yeah. Wikitest it was, is so good. When I first saw it performed for my, by my buddy Gary in Australia, I said, oh, app magic can be good. I didn't realize app magic can be good. So it wasn't right away that I said, I'm going to make an app. But back here is the thought app magic can be good. So now fast forward to that story I'm telling you. And, and I said, you know what? I'm going to make an app because app magic can be good. And the reason to make anything digital and make any product, whether it's digital or analog, the reason to make a product is to, especially digital, and especially an app, is efficiency and, um, and the ability to fool, if we're talking about app magic, right? And so I said, the way we're doing this is archaic, is mechanical, is not good. It's, 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 it's convoluted. Yeah. So I want to make an app to make that process easy, thereby allowing me to fool people. That was it. That's the reason it started. And so then I got the call from Mark about Diverter. And what Diverter does is diverts a phone call. Great. So yeah, there was similarity there. But after he and I talked, we both agreed this was independent thinking. These are not you know, one was not a, a copy of the other. It was, I mean, I didn't even know Diverter existed. So, so Mark was very, uh, very nice. And he said, yeah, you should absolutely move forward with doing that. It's a, it's your own thinking and you're, you know, created this app. So it's great. But also uh, the stranger was doing more, you know, a, kind of a deeper dive into the performance side of this. It was, it wasn't just about diverting a call. It was about creating convincers, um, the way we bring contacts in, uh, the, the performance opportunities for it, et cetera. Um, 
and then added on from there the deeper dive of all the different modules and and the way it's performed and, and what it what it presents so the stranger is its own beast at this yeah, point um but i just wanted to give those nods to, to mark because i you know he was a mensch about it and we had great conversations he's continued to be that way and um and his original thinking on wiki test is what sparked a revolution really he yeah. i think that sparked a revolution uh yeah. in the in the mac the magic app world and so i'm grateful for that and so the, so that's how the stranger became you know started and it, it and it went it's gone to a place that i couldn't have imagined when i first started doing it and people came up to me when i first uh uh had a a real public uh it, it first was released by conjurer community they in partnership and they put it out there and then i went to magic live and had a booth and that really opened it up in the in that community and people would come up to me and they say well are you going to are you going to stop development on it like some other developers have and leave us in the dust, you know, leave us out, out to dry? And I said, no, I'm going to keep doing it. And, you know, I'm people that are, are in the community now know, well, I didn't just stop doing it. I mean, I, I didn't just keep continuing to do it, rather. I, I never stopped, you know, and it gets deeper and deeper. And I keep putting out updates and I keep listening to the community and and putting out new ideas and it keeps growing. And every time I put out a major upgrade, people have said to me, what else can you do with it? And then I put out an upgrade and they go, oh, wow. You know, so, I mean, it, keep, it keeps going. And we've started work on Stranger 4.0 and it's big, it's really big. So this is, and, and, you know, I've said this before in a way, but I think this is like, this is the upgrade that we've been waiting, you know, it's, it's gonna be big. So I'm really excited about it. And, uh, and so there's always stuff to, to do because it's it's about adding functionality it's about making it more streamlined it's about giving more convincers it's about making it easier for the user the 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 interface easier for the user making it you know for the performance that it just things just work even better and again functionality and features so it's fun i'm having a ball with it does that answer your question or did i just ramble it, does. Or... it absolutely does no i mean I, I i love the app and and that's one of the things that's key to me is that you're so passionate about making it the best it can be and constantly improving it i remember about a year ago when illusionist pulled support for all of their apps overnight and everybody was like oh this is this is terrible I've, I, I, I especially people make a make it a feature of their acts and and then all of a sudden it's it's gone away literally overnight and and that is a concern yeah. and it's why a lot of people don't go all in with app magic because they're worried that at least if i, I buy a product from a dealer that's my product. I own it. And, and people can, are concerned it's, about app yeah. magic, but I know that you are so passionate about constantly improving it, which is just great to see. Yeah, it's, it's been, it's been great. And, and look, people need to understand this is not a, an inexpensive endeavor for me. You know, I mean, I am, what I pour into the stranger on an R and D level is huge. And, you know, not only my time investment, but financial investment you know there's this is a this is a big big commitment for me and so i'm i'm in you know i'm fully in uh to this thing and, and i do it because i love it i do it because i want to bring the community and by the way the community is what's so vital to this effect we have a community of people globally that we all call each other strangers that all want that and many of us become friends and that was the whole idea have come together to help each other to help other strangers do better you know look better perform better and we all want to help each other many people say that it's more fun to be a stranger than it is the magician right so the person being called so it's it's this global community of people that i i i rely on i love i respect and i'm i'm grateful for and um so yeah and i'm i'm very happy benke smith and i uh who makes cube smith and time smith and dice smith and is a great friend and a, a hu great human being and an amazing developer uh we're putting out a, a product called the stranger network which will well i shouldn't announce that yet is this not the place to announce it uh never mind <laughs> i said that but uh you'll be very happy about this i know but we, so we're you know we're really it's all about bringing this community together and it, it's it's really special so 
uh, I'm very happy ab about where it's gone, where it's going, the progress of it. Uh, like I said, the next incarnation is I'm over the moon for what it will present. And, and when are we, when it, is there a time frame to when we can see 4.0 or anything else that you have planned? Uh, for, for Stranger, I can't give you a timeline on 4.0. We are in development now. Uh, it's a big one. So I, I don't want to put a, a date on it, but, but um, yeah, I don't want to put a date on it, but it's, it's in active development now. So, and, and by the way, and this, yeah, go ahead. No, go, 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 you go first. Don't forget, don't forget what you're saying, because I want to say one little thing. Um, Got it. Uh, Blackpool is huge for me, huge. And Blackpool is when we released the international version. And thanks to David Penn, thanks to David Penn, I remember saying, you know, basically this entire podcast is about me thanking everybody else in my life. Uh, <laughs> David had said to me, I said, David, I would love for you to put this on the Wizard product review. And he said to me, I really like this product, but it's only US English. I can't review this. I said, oh, wow, okay. I guess it should be in the UK too. Right, because there's certain aspects to it that you want to make sure that the that it looks and feels like a phone call out of the UK, right? Yeah. And so I said, well, I better do that. So now it's available in about 50 different languages and regions. And we released the initial international version, which was about 25, I think, regions at Blackpool. And that was a wow. big deal, big deal. And going, being able to be at Blackpool with an international version of this in so many regions was huge and just huge for me. And, uh, and we worked so hard to do that. And I remember actually it was after the, it was the first night of Blackpool, right? After the first day, right? Because it was not released that I was able to push the button. I actually put a video out of this, pushing the button on the release of that version happened the evening of the first day of Blackpool, because we were working so hard to get it out. And there were nights leading up to Blackpool before I left three, four o'clock in the morning, I'm sitting huddled in my bathroom, talking to my developers and trying to get this, this thing out and ready to go. And it wasn't until that night that I was able to push the button and release it and uh, then have the rest of Blackpool with the international version. So that was a big deal for, for me. And we worked, we worked so hard to, to do that. And now, and that, and that is what has opened up this community globally, you know, being able to do that. And it's been amazing. Very thankful. What were you going to say? Well, I was going to say, you, you mentioned you've now got your own app company. So are we yeah. going to be seeing in the future other magic apps that aren't anything to do with The Stranger? Are you actively developing other ideas and other concepts? And um, is that what the company is all about? Can you Yes. Tell so us it's about that? developing apps that are both in the magic space and out of the magic space. Okay. So that's important, right? And, and by the way, I mean, I come from a background in software. So I have an understanding and experience working uh, in the product area of leading products, right? And teams yeah. to do this. Yeah. And so that's where this comes from, from a UI standpoint, from a, uh, from a, a flow standpoint, from a, uh, just, the, just managing a team of, of people to do this. So that's where it all comes from, uh, the ability to do that. But, um, so, but the stranger has kicked me off to say, okay, you know what, we can do more. So uh, you'll see apps both in and out of the magic space, but I'm very excited. I have a, a product coming out, uh, Sean Pop and myself, uh, Sean had an idea for an app and then we now have built it into what it is called Gig Deck. And that will be ready for release by early next week. And that's been in development for about a year. And I'm very excited about this product. Uh, I'm excited about version 1.0 and I'm really excited about where it's going to go in the future. Uh, 1.0 is a streamlined version of where it will go, but it's not a magic trick. It's, a, uh, it's an organizational tool to manage your props and routines and set lists and clients and bookings. And it's so great. I think it's so great. Uh, and it's been so helpful to me uh, and so that is that is again not a trick, but an organizational app, 
and that's called Gig Deck. And you can find out about it by going to mygigdeck.com, mygigdeck.com. Yeah, that'd be great. That would be great. Thank you. Appreciate mm -hmm. that. Uh, and uh, and that, like I said, will be ready for release probably by early next week. Uh, will be submitted to the Apple App Store uh, for review. So we're very close on that. Uh, Is that something that will eventually come out of Android as well? Um, I'm not sure. I'm still contemplating that. You know, the that's a big. Uh, it will eventually have a desktop component, so mm -hmm. uh, in a future version, so uh, all users will be able to access the their content through the desktop, and initially as an Apple a iPhone app. As far as an Android app is concerned, I'm still unclear as to what the future holds for that. The Stranger is available on Android and there's amazing functionality between the two platforms. In fact, uh, you know, we talk about video calls on the stranger and not, how that ups the, the game and the ante for uh, the presentation. One of the things that is not ubiquitous on Android is uh, the ability to do uh, video calling right from the phone, right? And so yeah. certainly not ubiquitous to do video calling from the phone to an iPhone. Well, the Stranger app makes it possible to do video calling from Android to Android right through the phone app, and also to do video calling between Android and iPhone right through the phone app. So we've built that in to the Stranger, which I'm really proud of, and it's it's really cool. Uh, so that's Stranger to Stranger, uh, built right into the, the app itself. So there is absolutely Android um, support within the stranger to get there has been a, a very involved process. Uh, and, and so I have to give consideration at this point of where gig deck will be on Android. Uh, but so that's gig deck. And then I've got, um, another app that I put together for, uh, Jean-Luc Poutron is putting out a, uh, Kickstarter deck of cards in a case. And I've got an app that goes along with that. That's almost ready for release. I've got another app uh, in conjunction with Charles Bach, who uh, is putting out a very cool app for, for, for a larger market, not just magicians, but for kind of everybody to do a magic trick. And, uh, and then I've got an app that I'm working on personally for myself uh, that will also be made available to the market for as a marketplace. And it's um, uh, that's in development as we speak. And so I'm hoping to have that out in the next month or two for myself, and then we'll uh, make that available to other uh, magicians. But none of those are, uh, no, that's not true. Uh, a couple of magic tricks in there. So it's sort of all over the, the map with that. Yeah. So where people people find out about all these different apps? Is there a website that they can go to? I mean, obviously, yeah. we've got the big deck. Well, there. they kind of, it's fragmented right now, to be honest with you. Um, my company, my app company is called Niche Studios, N-E-E-S-H, but there is no website on there yet that is being, uh, I'm sort of still constructing that. And at that point, I'll put everything into one place. Gotcha. Uh, but right now it's sort of fragmented. So the stranger can be on twistingtheaces.com uh, and the other apps will eventually be on twistingtheaces.com as well. Uh, and also available through like Jean-Luc will uh, release his app on his own, you know, and I'll make an announcement about it. Uh, probably in the stranger community uh, is where I'll do a lot of that. So the stranger community has become such an important and vital part of what I'm doing and who I'm interacting with that within the stranger community on Facebook is where and, and through mailing lists will be where I announce a lot of stuff because that community is sort of the, the core of it all. Yeah. Uh, so anybody that's in the stranger community will probably get first announcement of any of this stuff. Um, but, but, um, but yeah, so it's sort of all over the place, but eventually niche studios.com will, will be a, a central place to uh, access this content too. That's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. And I know recently you've teamed up with Prop Dog over in the UK, haven't you? Prop yeah. Dog are all are offering stranger apps and you know obviously prop dog and dave bonsall have a huge following over here in the uk so uh yeah, well they I, yeah. they've been amazing absolutely amazing i love prop dog and and uh and so the stranger app is available uh from a very small set of develop of dealers at the moment 
um, I haven't released it to Murphy's or to Penguin, or, you know, it's only available through a very small set of dealers at the moment. And so um, Prop Dog is one of them. Uh, they are carrying the Stranger app, which I'm really glad to have that relationship with them. And they've been amazing. And, uh, and I think it's doing well for them too, which is great. So yeah, I, I love it. So if you're interested and uh, they offer, I have a, I'll just say this, uh, you can you can buy this directly from me, but the, these in many cases this small subset of, of dealers, I've created a a way a mechanism for them to offer more uh, mm. value added if you buy directly from the dealer. And I've done that because I want I want to create that relationship with these dealers. I want users to have a relationship with their dealers and to feel uh, benefit from purchasing from dealers. And so mm -hmm. I know that Prop Dog is offering a value add to its users if you buy directly from Prop Dog. So wow. just, just to put that right. out there. Yeah. So they they actually are able to offer um, basically a hundred dollar value extra at no cost to the user if you buy directly from Prop Dog. Well, so people in the UK head over to Prop Dog then. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's, that's cool. That's exactly. Yeah, it's cool. Cool. Here's a question. I've got two more questions for you before we wrap this up, Jonathan. The first yeah. question is, what do you think the uh, Jonathan of uh, you know, years gone by, that guy who's uh, sitting in a hotel room in New York, deciding to give up on his software job to go and make it big in Los, uh, Los Angeles, well, how do you think he'd react if he realized 20 years later, you're effectively back in software? <laughs> doing the same thing 20 years on. Yeah, you've got an amazing career and that's not the only thing that you do, but you've come full circle. It's very interesting to see that you kind of had this epiphany. I'm going to leave. I'm going to do this with my life. And now through various different reasons and various different situations, you're now running your own software company doing effectively what you did 20 years ago when you decided to walk away. It's interesting. Wow. Uh, I think you'd be really happy. Yeah. I think we'd be really happy, you know. I mean, the 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 thing is, I've never done. I have yet to, except for that one retail job, I have yet to do anything in my life where I didn't have some joy in it, have a love for it, right? When I worked for the software company back in the day, I loved it. I loved, I loved it. You know, I loved doing it. I I, I get great joy out of. The technical side of my life. I mean, that that's really fun for me. Um, so, but since I left Colorado and moved to LA, I've in in many ways have always been in control of what I've done. Now, the entertainment industry tries its best to rip that control away from you, uh, and so I've had to find ways to stay in control. And the way I have done that is by doing other things, right? By accepting the fact that sometimes I'll have to do other things to maintain control. Uh, and, but by doing that, it brings me joy. Sometimes it brings me frustration because I'm not always getting the thing that I would like to also be doing, but it's okay because I can come back to being in control of the things that I am doing. And so when I wake up in the morning, I am in control of what my day looks like. And, mm -hmm. and so I think I would be very proud of my, I'd be very happy and pleased to see that I'm still doing things that bring me joy uh, and allow me to be in control of those things. So uh, none of this, I, I don't feel that I wake up and I have to do something that I'm, uh, I'm being forced to do something. You know, it doesn't mean I don't have stress in my life. It doesn't mean that I'm not a lot of it. So, but it doesn't mean that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, wishing I could be doing something else at certain times, but, um, but everything that I do is, is something that I'm giving myself the permission to do because I enjoy it. So I think I would be very pleased with where I'm at. That's amazing. And I think I, I, I totally agree. And you can tell how passionate you are about everything you do. I remember seeing you on the stand, on the booth at Blackpool. And one of the reasons I bought so heavily into The Stranger is because you just, your, your enthusiasm for the whole thing was infectious. 
Like, mm-hmm. I think I came up to you on day three. And the dealers that are on day three, halfway through, they're just sitting there. They're just waiting for it to end. It's like, right, I'm done now. <laughs> Please just make all these magicians go away. While you were just firing all four cylinders, you were like, this is amazing. Let me show you this. This is the most amazing thing ever. And it's like that infection. That's what sold me. Like 100%, that's what sold me. Thank you. Um, that's so cool to see. The final question is, is what's next? Like, is there anything left on your bucket list that you, and the reason I ask you this is because let's be honest, let's just be completely honest here. You've had a career that most people could only dream of. Your career as an actor within the entertainment industry in Los Angeles has been incredibly successful. If you said to somebody who's up and coming, if you could do this, would you be happy? They'd be like, oh my gosh, yes. Your, your, your career as a magician has been incredibly successful. There's some people that, that their ultimate goal is to headline the Magic Castle. Yeah, that's standard for you. Um, there's, you know, your career as a creator um, has just been amazing. You've created some wonderful products and now the whole thing's blown off with The Stranger and the apps you're doing. You've excelled at everything that you do. Is there anything left? And you've, you've said openly in this interview, you don't really plan stuff out. So it's probably not the right person to ask this question to. But is there anything left on your bucket list that you kind of go, I want to achieve that, whether it be from an acting point of view, from a magic point of view, from an app development point of view, what's next? Well, I mean, the, uh, yeah, you know what? I really want to be uh, a series regular on a TV show. And I've had recurring characters and, uh, but I, I would, I would like to, and by the way, this is, does not negate or any of the other things I'm doing, magic, mm. s- software, any of that, that's, that's still there. I mean, I, I, uh, this is not to say I want that to go away. Mm. Yeah. But what is something that I would really love uh, to, to know that I have done and am doing? Uh, I would be to walk on a studio lot every day and 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 be in a in a show, and that would be that is something that I still long for. You know what? You you're the sort of person that will make it happen because you've shown that throughout your career that you 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 know there's people in the world that watch things happen. You've made things happen over and over and over again, and so. I think if anybody could accomplish that dream, it's you, Jonathan. Genuinely, I really think that you could. Thank you. It's well, true. We're, uh, yeah. You know, it's it's. Uh, I have. To, yeah. I thank you. I mean, we'll 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 see. It's a, it's a, it's it's tough. It's tough. But but yeah. I mean, I I just I but I try as best I can to not have regret either. You know, and and uh, let things roll off my back keep moving forward. If I get hit back, I try to get up as fast as I can and do the next thing. And I think uh, that's why I say I never want to put any of this away or aside, because it's what it all fuels me, you know, and, and magic, I, I'm so incredibly grateful for magic, because magic has always been there. And magic has fueled so much and has given me and opened up so many doors and given me so many opportunities that um, I, it's, it, it just, it, I, I hope it never goes away. I don't think it ever will go away. Uh, it's more prevalent in my life than it ever has been. And, uh, and I'm, I'm grateful for it. So it's, it, it's such an important part of my life. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Um, what an incredible way to end this interview. Look, uh, this interview has been so good. It's been so great. I, 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 I had high hopes and you've surpassed them and then some. And, and you, it's very inspirational. I hope that everybody who watches this takes away some of the really important points that you've hit on here in this interview because you are inspirational. You've, you've had a dream, you've gone out, you achieved it and you continue to go and excel at everything that you do. And it's just incredible to incredible to watch and I, thank you so much for coming on the channel Jonathan thank you so much thank you Craig you I'm so honored to be here you are, you're you are an amazing human being and I'm uh, touched that you even asked me to do this so thank you so much and thanks to all the the watchers and uh for for asking for it and if you need anything you can always reach out to me always reach out to me on uh, you can find me on Facebook and 
well, the what's, your, so, what's the social media? I'm going to put the website links down in the description. But what social uh, media are you on Instagram or anything like that? I'm on or? Instagram and Facebook mostly, right? I'm not on Twitter. I mean, I'm on Twitter, but I don't go to Twitter. Uh, but uh, Jonathan Levitt, one T, Jonathan Levitt, you find me. Lovely. Yeah, Lovely. easy, easy. Awesome. So, find so find me. The, yeah. I'm going to put links down below for your socials. I'm going to put links down below for your um uh, all the different websites that we've mentioned during this interview absolutely everything so you guys can check it out and and please do buy the stranger please buy the stranger because it is just, it will change your life it's so it's such a good app it really is thank so you. Buy, buy the stranger support support jonathan so um thank you. jonathan thank you again one more time guys thank you leave a comment down below so that he sees it and uh yeah leave a comment down below let us know what you think of the interview and uh, yeah, I'm going to be back tomorrow with another three videos here on Magic TV. So uh, thanks. For, I don't know. I'm just done. See you again. Take care, guys. Bye.